Redditors who have been on a reality TV show, what are some of the off-screen secrets we aren't supposed to know? I worked for a bakery that was on, and won, Cupcake Wars. The premise of the show is to surprise the bakers with a few, more often than not, odd ingredients and see what they're really made of. In reality, we found out the ingredients a few months before the show. Had we not known, there's no doubt we'd have lost. There are definitely people who thrive under pressure, both in performance and creativity, and they have better things to do with their time than crank out cupcakes for Food Network. Tell an unprepared contestant they have 40 minutes to make a delicious cupcake using tater tots and 9 times out of 10 you'll have a middle aged woman sobbing into her mixing bowl. That lady is usually my mom. Met someone on a plane once who was on House Hunters. After she purchased her new house, the show came and taped her viewing that house. Then they took her to two other houses to make it seem like she was going to pick between the three. In reality, she had bought a house before they even taped the show. Must be why they always get the house they pick instead of getting outbid by someone else. I've known the Long Island Medium's family since kindergarten. A lot of the minor plot is scripted and the house is not in a cul-de-sac like it appears in the intros. A friend of mine was on that old MTV show next. One guy. Four girls. She was the first date off the bus. She's really pretty. And a super cool girl. She and the guy hit it off. And he offered her the second date or whatever. She accepted. But then the producers asked her to get back on the bus because they didn't get a good shot of her coming out of the bus originally. She went back on. Waited for action. When she came off the second time. The guy yelled next. I have been to Carlos Bakery, the bakery from Cake Boss. While there we learned that the wedding they were filming in Italy was completely faked, and they never actually got married. Kind of ruined the whole experience for me. I live 5 blocks away. Buddy is never there unless he's filming a commercial. My uncle played a local Native American historian on Sci-Fi's Ghost Mine. He didn't know crap about the Native Americans of that area and only lived around there for about 8 years. He just passed away but our family got a hoot out of seeing him bulls through some TV. I auditioned for The Voice last year and it is a horribly long process. I was at the audition site for more than 5 hours. But the strangest part is that they put you into rooms by genre, even if you don't sing that genre. So an incredibly talented pop singer won't get in because they were placed in a country genre room. It's pretty odd. That is odd. I auditioned for the voice as well last year and they didn't do the genre thing. We just stood in line for like 6 hours and then got grouped in rooms of like 8 random people. I used to work in reality TV. Almost everything is planned ahead of time. TV is expensive to make and no one has the time or money to make an entire show of real moments. Some shows are more real than others. Cop follow shows are usually pretty authentic. Anything with celebrities is probably all fake. Most dramatic phone conversations are fake. I did voiceover once as a nurse calling with bad news. If you want a free wedding sign up for a wedding show with a host. They have a reputation to uphold so they are invested in giving you a good event and you could get a lot of free stuff out of it. Cut. I'm sorry officer but you were in our light when Daryl threw his crack pipe at you then dove over the fence. We're going to need him to put his pants back on then shoot the sequence again. Oh and Daryl this time when you get taste try to scream a lot more. Really get into the moment. My cousin went on Judge Judy once. Sued her ex BF for something or other. And the producers told her things like. Make sure you tell her right away if the other person is lying. Don't wait until she asks you and don't make eye contact with her. It makes her mad. Having seen the show. She knew better and ignored everything they said. She won, but not after being berated by Judge Judy for being a liar even though she had all the evidence needed. I was called to be on a show like that. I bought a lemon, car, and somehow a TV show got hold of my court filing. They probably figured it would be dramatic TV since the seller was a friend of the family, but frick that. The last thing I was is to get told off on TV. Finally I have a story. When I was 14 I applied to one of those home makiova shows, although this show was just a room. First off all the application process is crazy. First you have to write in, then you have to make an individual video and then a video with your whole family, before they finally call you to tell you. 
They ask if you can set up a camera or something, which totally ruins the surprise. Then, once chosen, you have to leave home for like a week on your own dime. Luckily this coincided with my spring break so I didn't miss any school. At the start I did a consultations with the designers that lasted all of 2 minutes in reality. It took forever to film because we had to keep repeating stuff and kept being asked the same. Very leading. Questions. They put up all these lights to make the rooms much brighter than they actually are. Also the pieces used to attach the lights are still on our ceiling. Not sure how or why. The entire time I was on camera. I was being told what to do. I was definitely more of an alternative kid, but they put me in this preppy little skirt and braids and told me to be super over excited about everything. I will say though, the reveal is very authentic. I loved what they did. The sad part though is that because of time and budget restraints, a lot of the amazing stuff doesn't last long. For instance, they made me this huge, beautiful custom desk. But the wood was never finished, just painted, and it started chipping off after like a year. Also my curtains, which I didn't have before, were basically stapled in place and they don't actually move. Overall an interesting experience and hey I got some free stuff out of it, which was nice cause my family was poor. A friend of mine tried out for American Idol and she said it always seemed like the people wait then they get their big shot in front of the TV judges. In reality it's a ton of steps and hours of waiting, to go through loads of intermediate judges who decide if you're either TV material, the insane or terrible people, or actually good enough to move on. I was once profiled on show where they interviewed me on camera, and also shot a lot of b-roll, shots of me doing stuff. First of all the interview lady couldn't have cared less about me until the word action, then she was all concerned looking and acting like she was my best friend. Camera off, back to business. Then for the b-roll, they made me do all kinds of things to look sad, even though I was not sad at all. They made me, well, not like force me, but you know, wanted me to wring my hands and look off into the distance. They actually said, now wring your hands and look off into the distance. It was clear I was a pawn in their production plans. Didn't care for the experience. I was on a tattoo reality show. It wasn't necessarily planned but I had to redo some scenes. Like the introduction and follow up interview. Everything else was authentic. I was on Antiques Road Show. Which I suppose is a reality show of sorts. It's actually pretty legit. But considering it's PBS that shouldn't be surprising. The main thing you don't realize is how long you wait in lines. Your ticket has a time on it to help control when you arrive so foot traffic isn't bad. You get there and wait for about an hour in line. At the front of the line you get your items checked. Each person gets two. And these tickets direct you to the next line you need to stand in. I had a watch and some art. So I had tickets for the Time Peace and Asian art line. After the first hour and a half of waiting, you wait in the main room. Basically how the setup works is that there's a small circle of banners and tables in the middle of the room which obscure the outside where all of the lines are directed. Everything is filmed in the middle of that room. You go through the line and when you get to the front an appraiser looks at your item. If they like it they go and talk to the producer to see if they'll film it. If they film you're taken to a small back room where they've got makeup and might make adjustments to your clothing. Like if you're wearing a branded shirt they'll make you change. But they actually advise you to wear neutral clothing if you're coming to the show. Then they do the interview after you sign the release. If your item is valuable they actually have security escort you out to your car. All in all it was pretty efficient and none of it seemed fake. It took a really long time. About 5 hours of mostly standing in lines. I'm so glad to hear it isn't horribly fake. I love Antiques Roadshow. Veneer. Decided to make an account after seeing this post, but my family was on the food network for our restaurant once. Pretty much the entire process is fake. The producers faked scenarios so that there could be more drama and suspense in the episode. Even the portrayal of one day was actually spaced weeks apart, having my family members come dressed in the same outfit so that it seemed it was all in the same day. I don't know if any of you watched or remember the short-lived reality show My Life is Liz but I was on it as an extra for a couple episodes. The first season followed her as an awkward teenager who despises preps and going to high school in Texas. The second season followed her when she moved to Brooklyn, New York to pursue art history in college. This is where I come in. My private art school. 
Pratt Institute, surprisingly relished in the fact that MTV was going to be filming on campus and even allowed them to recruit extras from the student body. I think all they were thinking about was exposure. What I didn't know is that these extras were cast as her filler friends and the crew was only allowed permission to film outside of academic buildings. The friends I had that got chosen let it completely consume them. I also knew Liz personally and every time she saw me she never remembered my name because I never had a speaking role. Needless to say, I was really disappointed in how fake the show actually was. The majority of it was scripted and it was supposed to show what going to art school was really like. Their portrayal of it was completely unrealistic and the scenes of her in class were shot in a completely different location. It frustrated me to think teenagers were going to watch this and think I want to move to New York and live a life like this. No you don't because it is nothing like it is on TV. Most extras didn't get compensated for their time either. I'm glad I finally got to get this off my chest. My friend was on X Factor. He says that off camera. All Simon Carwell would do was smoke cigs and do push ups. <laughs> Haven't been on a show, but worked in TV. Lighting. Lighting takes forever. There are literally hours between takes. If there aren't then the lighting was set up beforehand. That means that the stars have to stand in a very specific location during those impromptu scenes. They aren't impromptu at all. I saw one episode of The Bachelor where the couple decided to make out frick in the shower. It was one of those tub showers with the curtain. Well the curtain was a translucent white with a purple tinted light behind so that the silhouettes could be seen in the act. This was the worst example of a staged scene I have ever seen in a reality show. I mostly do concerts, but got to do my first movie last year. Got called in as a specialist to program DMX for a dance scene. Two freaking days for a 15 minute portion of the movie. I was on the reality TV show Wife Swap almost 5 years ago. I was 11 at the time and my mom got switched to Arizona. Anyway there are really no behind the scenes secrets. Most of it is manipulated in editing. To make things more dramatic and twist our words around. But a behind the scenes thing that is awesome is they buy you pretty much any food you want. I was on Come Dine With Me. Pretty big in the UK, the Basildon all in one special. I was the dude who cooked chips, cheese and gravy for shoots and gigs. Dave Lamb, the narrator, doesn't write his own stuff. People will only search your room if you want them to find stuff. Arguments are encouraged, and if anything is missed by the cameras, it has to be played out again a second time. Sometimes the camera crew will prompt you to do certain things at certain times. For example, guests didn't like me cracking my knuckles, which when tapped on the shoulder, I was told to perform. I have a friend who used to frequently see filming of Jersey Shore live because he was from Jersey. He says that they have scripts hanging above the camera and it's not really real. What is this blasphemy? I was on the show Trading Spaces Family on TLC. If you haven't seen it, basically you switch houses with a neighbor for a couple days and remodel one of the rooms in their house with a $1000 budget, a designer, and a shared carpenter. On screen, they show just the families working, but behind the scenes there's like 6-10 other people that come in the room to expedite the process. That is, painting. Also, the catering was delicious and delivered right to the kitchen. And I was a fat little kid. Was in a club when Breaking Amish. LA was being filmed in Vegas. Real bottom of the barrel reality TV. Anyway, the producers gave them the alleged Amish. Tons of booze. And brought girls over to their table. The alleged Amish danced like freaking idiots and at one point danced with one of the go-go dancer type club employees. It was at the now defunct ACT at the Palazzo so there were tons of people dressed in shocking and very sexual suggestive outfits. I'd love to give you juicy details, but it was not all that exciting. Signed the release to be on TV and never even bothered watching the episode to see if I made it into the show. Can't be more fake than Amish Mafia. Approximately 80% of reality shows are made in post-production. Entire storylines are created literally from found footage mixed with what is called Frankenbytes, which is where interview lines are created from pieces of a bunch of different interviews. So we can make anyone say anything we want. Also, little fun fact, if a cast member is a dong to the field producers while shooting, the editors will back up their team and make that cast member look worse when it comes to editing. Source, I'm a reality TV editor. I was on an episode of a show where people hunt 
for houses. Internationally, they film the show after the people have already bought the house. They just take everything out and have them walk through it like it's the first time they've seen it. Also if you're watching and see any personal effects etc it's automatically not gonna be the house or apartment they get. Producers, by default, pick the winners they want footage. Fairness in competition is not an issue. 2 minute challenge, you won the money in seconds, but it was boring. You can have the money, but do it again. If you win again pretend like it's the first time. If you lose pretend like you're devastated, you'll get the money anyway. Your time is running out. Time had already run out, but the contestant was popular with producers. So you did it. You did it. You won. Are you excited? You beat the 2 minute mark. Actual elapsed time 4 minutes and 45 seconds. You lost, but it was boring. Try again if you win and the footage is better then you get the money. Have a do over. Our setup has ruined this girl's chances. Should we give her a do over answer? Number. She's not fun to watch anyway. A person wins. $50,000 in the pilot. The series is shot with a new host. Bring back the pilot contestant again. I don't know if they got the original $50,000 in addition to the money they won in the series shoot. Our lawsuit still isn't settled from the last show we produced. Executive producer. Get the cheapest of everything. Cheap props. Don't tell other crew if we buy one group lunch. Make them buy their own lunch. Keep lunch a secret. Cheap production. Cut costs. Drug addict crew are desperate they will work cheaper. Charter me a helicopter. I don't feel like driving to location in Long Beach. I was on kitchen nightmares with my friends and family. We ate on the before day. Nothing at our table was fake. But I don't know about the kitchen scenes. Never watched the episode. We did get our food for free because we complained. Though, it was really crappy. The waiter seemed pretty nervous in front of all of the cameras though. Also, they just told us not to look at the cameras when they came by. I did briefly meet Chef Ramsey when I was taking out the trash for the store I worked at which was next to the restaurant. He was smoking a cigarette. It was pretty cool. I just said, hey, chef and walked away because I didn't want to disturb him. He said, hey back. I was once a referee for WWE. All of the wrestling you see is staged. All of it. AMA request. WWE referee. As many here have already stated, the reality part is pretty minimal. Very heavily scripted. The director would tell us to do things and if she didn't like what she got she'd have us do it again. Some notes of interest. They only had one camera. So for competitions they actually started each team at a different time so they could film us starting. Then edited it together to look like it was all simultaneous. Same for finish times. The entire season was shot in 5 days. Even though episodes released weekly and they tried to make it look like a whole week had passed. One day they even had us bring a change of clothes so they could shoot 2 episodes. They were constantly trying to get us to badmouth the other teams. But everybody really liked each other. Ours of b-roll footage and they would only use the 5 seconds where you finally give up and say something kind of vaguely negative after they've been badgering you the whole interview. So, you didn't say what show this was. I was in a hotel where they were filming top model. And was I found odd was that they did multiple takes for most things that were to appear natural. But you can sort of see it when you watch these types of shows. They often appear to have multiple cameras. When in fact they have one. My wife is presently on a reality show related to her job. Every time I visit her at work, I have a camera in my face. They follow them around for months and come up with 40-20 minute episodes. One secret is that there is no dramatic background music playing in reality when something dramatic happens. Also, TV makes normal things look way cooler than they really are. Like just driving across town. <laughs> Not me, a friend. Like most other people in here lol. She was on one of those survival shows where they take contestants out to deserts and mountains and crap. She said it was about 80% scripted. Lot of misleading editing as well. Like they tell them what to do and when to do it and if they don't do it good enough for what the producers wanted they would redo it multiple times. She said they never even dared coming close to any real danger due to the obvious reasons. I remember watching one scene and she told me it wasn't even the same day of shooting as the other parts but it was made to seem so. Reality TV is pretty much all scripted honestly. Please tell me that show wasn't naked and afraid. 
The closest thing to real reality TV is cooking shows, but not the reality TV show ones. The ones where they actually teach you how to cook things. Although there is still a lot of lighting bogus and retakes and whatnot. My sister's friend's hubby works on editing a show of that cook guy something fat starts with F. Apparently all he does is hit on the women and stare at their boobs. He stresses trying to find enough non-pervy scenes to put together a whole episode. A friend's dad went to Storage Wars episode. They stage stuff in the storage lockers. I visited the Porn Stars Porn Shop when I was in Vegas a while ago. They weren't filming at the time so the stars of the show weren't in the shop. It was actually really cool seeing all the high dollar sign dollar sign items you see on the show displayed. They have all that stuff in cases and for sale. However, what you don't see on TV is that the center of the shop is full of show merch, porn stars t-shirts, chumley pint glasses, DVDs, etc. So many of their real items are so high dollar sign dollar sign I have a feeling the vast majority of their business comes from the merch and not the porn stuff. My cousin went on Canadian Idol, went all the way to the celebrity judges. The judges liked her but the producers changed their minds. She didn't get to go on the show. Talk about a letdown. One of my best friends wanted to go to LA. After a night of drunkenness we were watching TV when my friend had the idea to fake a story to get on Judge Joe Brown. My friend's roommate found a broken guitar and the next day, still drunk and awake, called the show and made up this elaborate lie about how his roommate had come home and smashed his guitar. The Judge Joe Brown people loved the idea and eventually flew them both out, put them in a hotel for 2 days and gave them like 150 bucks spending cash. Best episode ever. Was on a TV show called Shipwrecked in the UK. It's like Survivor. But for a teenage viewing audience, 90% of what was seen was genuine. People assumed we lived in Kushti hotels off camera. No we slept in sleeping bags on the beach or in the hut. If it rained and we couldn't start a fire, we had raw and cold food. Some things were organized as in Buxton. Can we go to an interview down on back beach and talk about X but that was pretty much the extent to which it was directed. No scripts. It was all our own thoughts and conversations. But Frick you. The hills was real. I don't care what anyone says. I was an extra in one of those shows that take a failing restaurant and bring in a celebrity to fix all of its problems. It was not a fun experience. Three things that stand out. All of the restaurant's problems. Everyone were either made up or things that had been solved years ago but were recreated for the cameras. The celebrity host had an earpiece and most of his lines, especially when he got all fired up, were fed to him. If the Food Network promises you will get a free meal for 2 hours of shooting, what they mean is they might give you a granola bar for 8. I worked at a gas station that the meteorite men from the Discovery Channel came through once. They were real dongs and complained about the price of gas and cup of coffee to cashiers that clearly didn't control the prices, and were being nothing but civil to them. I don't know if this counts as reality TV but I was on Dr. Oz once. It was an episode about teen pregnancy and one of the producers advertised on a message board I used to go on. I thought it would be fun so I agreed to be on the show. Basically they wanted me to talk about my experience with teenage pregnancy, and what I thought the impact of 16 and pregnant and teen mom had on me. At that time there was a ton of media coverage about the girls from teen mom and teen mom too, and a lot of people were beginning to say that this was the cause of so many young girls getting pregnant, because they wanted to be famous. My point in going on the show was that I thought it irresponsible to blame a TV show for something as serious as teenage pregnancy, and that it gave parents an easy way to get out of dealing with the situation at hand my daughter must have gotten pregnant because of this TV show. It has nothing to do with anything else in her life at all. Obviously there are a ton of contributing factors and going into denial about it really isn't helpful. So the producer and a cameraman came to my house and interviewed me for like 4 hours for the be real. The stuff they show before your segment. A lot of the time Ray. Wording and asking me the same question over and over again until I guess they got the response they wanted without outright telling me what to say. In the end it was about 2 minutes of footage in which I look like I'm completely bashing the TV shows and blame them for my getting pregnant. They actually edited out anything intelligent I said, and then put IT into Dr. OZS lines. I literally saw my opinions being used against me. It was very bizarre. So they had me on stage with Massey, Kaylin, 
and Leah from Teen Mom and for the first part of the segment I was totally dumbfounded and completely nervous. I didn't really defend my position well at all in my opinion until after the commercial break. The second half of the segment was what I was really proud of and I got it together enough to clearly articulate what I was going to say, then when the show aired they completely edited out the second half. Another crappy thing was that they tried to give me lines, and the producer kept coming in the room I was getting ready in, repeating the lines over and over to me. When I was so nervous in the first half of the show I ended up spitting out something stupid about prom that they kept telling me. I then found out that all the teen moms had a copy of the lines that I was supposed to say, and Massey absolutely owned me on stage over the prom comment, it was really embarrassing. IDK if that's normal but I thought it was kinda fricked up that they knew exactly what I was going to say and I was totally in the dark about what they were going to say. Doctor. Oz was also a super dirtbag and threw a tantrum at his producers because the teen mom's babies weren't behaving on set when the cameras were rolling. I was almost on what not to wear and it was definitely a bit different than what you see on TV. It started at a punk show outside LA. I'm an east coaster and we like to get in the mood for punk metal whatever shows, but apparently in Cali it's jeans and plaid shirts all the way. I was dressed a little unusually but nothing crazy. Imo was approached by a woman who said she worked for a reality show and thought I'd be great for it. Could she get my info and send me the details? I got an email the next day explaining it was for what not to wear. Apparently the prize was a designer's wardrobe plus picking one prize worth up to $20k. But that I had to find a bunch of friends to pretend like they turned me in for having a crappy wardrobe and also had to let them destroy all of my clothes. She asked me to come in for an official audition and wear my most outlandish outfit. I had a really hard time making the decision as to whether or not to audition. I have some self respect and doubted I would anymore after filming something like that. Plus I'd be embarrassed in front of the entire nation and I'd have to destroy clothes that I love. Eventually I decided frick it, $20k is $20k and showed up. While some photographer was snapping photos of me, the head honcho producer lady happened to walk through. She took a look at me and dragged the photographer to the back. They came back a couple minutes later and she said, I'm sorry you got dragged into this. I think you look great. You should just go home. The whole thing was really bizarre. It sucks because paperwork has been signed so most things could be considered damaging to the show and they could sue me for millions. So here is some minor secrets. Hole in the wall. That water is cold as frick. Felt like I had a mini heart attack every time my fat ass hit the water. Also, we didn't find out our team name until 30 seconds before running out on stage. Solitary 2.0. The truest show I've ever been on. 24 hour surveillance. Very little food and sleep. Non-stop horrible times. Easily one of the best and worst experiences of my life. Rock Band 2. The stars. The ending the show went differently. While filming I was given a different reason for being eliminated. It was not a big deal. Still eliminated either way. Also, it was nerve wracking. As we didn't know what song we were gonna do. It was using new instruments. In front of a large crew. Hence my lower than normal scores. MTV. True life I'm a backyard wrestler. What they filmed was pretty much how it went down. However I think people reacted a little crazier than they would have since the cameras were on them. American Ninja Warrior. That course is freaking difficult. I had no chance in heck of beating the first round. You found my secret gold stash comment gold for me and you can have some. Maybe. If you are new to the channel. You can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then. Check another video. Or don't. Either way. Have a great day you magnificent people.